We've got some major news coming from Elon Musk because he just made a statement against the latest verdict around Donald Trump in the clearest way we've ever seen, but that's not all. I think Elon Musk wants you to see something much more damaging about the verdict in the hush money trial that's going to further erode public trust in the institutions. Here's what Musk said on X right after news of Donald Trump's conviction came out on the last day of May. And I quote, Indeed, great damage was done today to the public's faith in the American legal system. If a former president can be criminally convicted over such a trivial matter, motivated by politics rather than justice, then anyone is at risk of a similar fate. Remember, this marks one of the very few times that Elon Musk has so explicitly thrown his weight behind a political candidate, even if for just one isolated case, and even if not for Donald Trump himself. Elon's raising a point that much bigger than any president or election cycle, that point is the public trust in the justice system that is the cornerstone of any functioning polity. A survey from 2022 revealed how America's trust in the judicial system stands at an all-time low, with over 53% of how Americans disapproving of the courts are doing with their job. And by the way, that erosion of trust has been happening from one end of the political spectrum with these trials and convictions against Trump but also from the Democrats with landmark decisions on social issues like the overturning of Roe v. Wade two years ago. And I think that's exactly what Elon Musk is pointing to that no one seems to be noticing. It has almost never happened in the history to the same degree that the political divide in the country would also start to translate into a divide in judicial trust. Now bear in mind that for someone like Elon Musk, it doesn't even have to mean that you're supporting or endorsing one candidate over the other, even though he subtly hinted at his potential endorsement of Donald Trump before November by saying that he certainly won't back Biden. I get that. Watch this clip from his conversation with Don Lemon earlier just this year. You recently met with Donald Trump in Florida. What did you guys talk about? Uh, I was at a dinner, I, I was not done, I was at a breakfast at a friend's place and Donald Trump came by. That's it. So you're not going to endorse a candidate? I may in the final stretch endorse a candidate, uh, but I don't know yet. Uh, I want to make a considered decision uh, before the election, uh, and if I do decide to endorse a candidate, then I will explain exactly why. Are you leaning towards anyone? No. You're not leaning towards anyone? Because you've been... I'm sure I'm leaning, leaning away from Biden. You're leaning on <laughs> I've made no secret of that. That's how I feel, and it's clear that Elon Musk's primary concern is not with Donald Trump, but on a larger scale with how robust the country's institutions and trust levels are. By the way, don't forget to subscribe for more discussions like this. It's said that justice delayed is justice denied. I think that it's also true that selective justice is also a denial of justice because the judicial system is one of the institutions in a country that needs public trust the most since it is the ultimate legal arbiter in the nation. When you look at the specifics of the current case against Donald Trump, there's a lot of things that many of his supporters believe reeks of political bias. First is the rather short duration of the official trial itself, which lasted just a few weeks, and then the fact that the prosecution had to dig over 18 years into Donald Trump's life to find something that is legally defined as best as a misdemeanor or low-level felony. And that too, while Trump was a private citizen and businessman never having been in public office, now prosecuted after the statute of limitations has expired. Then you put that into contrast with much more serious allegations that have embroiled the setting president and his son around the foreign business dealings. Perhaps you start to see where that gap in public trust is coming from. Donald Trump himself was asked about the verdict in a newly released interview with Fox and Friends right after the conviction where he echoed a similar sentiment. This is your first interview since the verdict. It's been yeah, 48 sure. hours. Uh, sure. where, where's, your head, where's your head at? Well, look, you know, I'm fighting for the Constitution. I'm fighting for the same thing that you three. I watch you all the time. and. Same thing that you do. You fight for freedom. You fight for your country. Uh, these people are sick. They're sick. They're deranged. It's weaponization of the Justice Department, of the FBI. And, you know, that's all coming out of Washington. You may think it's, uh, you may think it's brag. Uh, take a look at who opened the case. I'm not allowed to talk about it because I have a gag order. I'm probably, I guess, the first uh, presidential nominee and the leader, the lead leading crooked Joe by a lot, that's not allowed to talk. The sentencing is set for mid-July, until which Donald Trump has the time to file an appeal against the conviction, which he likely will. But all that happens, it's the optics of being named a convict that is going to give Donald Trump's detractors and political opponents a lot of material against him in the next few months in political campaigns. It's something similar to what we saw last year when a mugshot of Donald Trump was released which didn't do much to move the needle against him from his base and instead only did the opposite. 
And we may be seeing something similar right now as the Trump campaign has just raised nearly $53 million in just the last three days in fundraising. And that's interesting because New York as a state, which is where this trial was held and generally regarded as one of the weakest states for the Republicans' political footing, Despite that, there were several protests held outside the trial court in support of Donald Trump, including people reacting to the conviction itself and whether that will affect their voting decision. I want to be here because I think somebody has to stand up and say, this is invalid. You can't do this kind of law. This destroys American jurisprudence. The message is it's not going to backfire on the Democrats. It's going to backfire on Sleepy Joe. It's going to backfire on Albert Bragg. And it's, Trump is going to win. And I will vote for him for the third time, even if he's in jail. That political wedge is never good for a country when it starts to bleed out into institutions like the justice system that should be regarded as neutral and above the politics underneath. That's exactly what Elon Musk believes not enough people are paying attention to. Musk himself has shown somewhat of a soft corner for Donald Trump, despite not completely throwing his name and weight behind him. He lifted the ban on Donald Trump on X after he bought the news company. And now there is news that he's going to hold a town hall meeting with him in the coming weeks, which will be aired live on his platform. That means we're going to see Elon Musk make more interroads with the Republican base as the election nears. And there's even rumors that Donald Trump wants him to serve in his administration in some capacity if he returns as president. Right now, perhaps the next two months are the most important to see where both his potential collaboration as well as Donald Trump's trial leads because it's all potentially going to impact the decisive election coming up in November.